I think Alex Haley gave to those black communities something to reach for when he did Roots. And they figured, well, if he went and found his way back, I'm gonna go find my way back. Y'all know how many years black folks been trying to find their village in Africa since Roots? You know how many people done died and haven't found their roots? Maybe your roots wasn't over there. Maybe your roots is over here. Do this make sense? Maybe you're looking in the wrong place and it becomes frustrating at a point. And you're always looking at these young people out here talking about they stealing and they doing this. No, they trying to figure why no matter where I go, I'm under a curse look like of blackness. And I can't get the black off. Well, I want to tell them don't get the black off. Stop trying to quack. Begin the cluck. How you cluck? What we doing today? We're trying to teach you to stop looking in the wrong places. What I'm trying to say is, instead of trying to get to Africa, let's find, a, if you're a Creole, I'll give you a challenge. Find where your one drop Indian blood come from. Because the white man counted everybody out on the one drop black blood. Right? How can the Indians now be literally blue-eyed, blonde hair, and they, 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 they took the place of people that look like us, and some of them don't even have to be federally recognized as the past. They can be adopted into a tribe. Was not President Obama just adopted in a tribe a while back? Dr. King said in his speech of, I have a dream. He said the Negro people are in exile in their own land. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, The Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Dr. King was an intelligent man. I can't see Dr. King making that mistake, saying the Negro people are in exile in their own land. He did not say in the speech, the Negro people have been taken from their land in Africa and brought to this land. He did not say that in that speech. If you don't believe me, go pull up, I have a dream. And he said the Negro people are in exile in their own land. See, I understood that because I grew up with my grandfather saying we were born in exile. How we get in exile? Well, when the United States brought us in by decree, under C.C. Claiborne, as the governor, who was brought in from Tennessee, who was a Jayhawker, who was an expert at killing and removing Indians. And, and he had the approval by James Madison, the president of the United States, to do this. So who do you go to? We couldn't call the FBI. We couldn't call the NAACP. We couldn't call SCLC. That didn't exist. So we fought for ourselves. And stories got passed down. And I heard these stories growing up. And that's what I'm fighting today, to prove that them old people knew who they were. So they passed it down. They passed the stories. They passed the names down of who was doing these things to us, even the complexion of them. So I challenge people to do that. There were villages in Africa. Um, there were tribes in Africa. There's villages that was here, and tribes that was here. So no matter which continent we come from, we have this thing about tribal mentality, helping one another to survive. We don't need food stamp, welfare, section eight. We don't need that. Because our people survived for thousands of years without government handouts. And when the government is handing you something in one hand, you're losing a whole lot more in the other hand. No way the anthropologists, archaeologists know we're here and they didn't write it down somewhere. So let me see. 
Then I run across a book. It was about the mounds of America. I said, well, if this book telling the truth, I should find my mounds in here. Because nobody writes about Shafunta. There's not an Indian tribe ever claimed Shafunta as their descendants, but they got a lot of them federally recognized. I don't understand that. But when I turned into Louisiana, because we had every state accounted for where they have found mounds, and when I got to Louisiana, and I got to the T's that was Shafunta Nation, and they said that they dug up the biggest dig right here in what's present day St. Tammany Parish in Fountain Blue Park. It was a huge Indian mound. Why everywhere where our mounds are, they build? What are they covering up? So in this book, it document all the artifacts that they took out of the mound. By the orders of the governor of Louisiana, he let people take and take shells that was protecting the mounds, and they used that to spread on roads to get to their houses. Not realizing there was thousands of years of history, hard labor and work, someone else culture, someone else history, and you could just destroy it. And then you change the name of the place and put what you want there, and okay, let's move on, it's still there. Get over it. But they won't get over and let nobody else have a piece. But we supposed to just keep getting over. I'm tired of getting over. Aren't you tired of getting over?